Hi, it's Stefan here in Sofia, Bulgaria. Today I will take you on a virtual tour to Riva Monastery. This place is one of the musts for every person coming from abroad and visiting Bulgaria. It's included in the UNESCO list of World Heritage. Uh, Riva Monastery at the same time is the largest Christian Orthodox monastery in Bulgaria and has a special place in the heart of every single Bulgarian. The monastery was founded in the early 900s by one Bulgarian hermit, Saint Ivan Ryuski. Actually, Saint Ivan Ryuski is the divine protector of Bulgaria and the Bulgarians. He lived a monastic life in the mountain of Riva. And he to, here on the picture, you can see the small chapel built next to the cave where he lived. He lived as a hermit. Slowly around him, more and more people gathered, and this is how a monastic society was founded. Sen Ivan Ryuski, his images could be seen in the churches all around Bulgaria like the image here to the left. Uh, typically, he's presented uh, like a monk with a big white beard. The image here is from Riva Monastery. The monastery itself was founded uh, by him, as I mentioned, in the 900s, but uh, nowadays uh, some of the oldest buildings there are dated back to the 13th. 30s. For example, we are talking about the Hrelu Tower. This is a defensive tower built in the very heart, in the yard of the monastery, which was used by a local nobleman called Hrelu and his family. It was used for his personal protection and also for a place to live. Actually, most of the buildings nowadays, including the main church, were built in the early 1800s. This is a time when the monastery was turning into a significant educational and cultural center, not only a religious one. More and more pilgrims and ordinary people were coming to visit the place. This is the reason why uh, the people from the monastery, the abbot, decided that it is a time to build a larger church, a more spacious one. And this is the result. The church was built by Bulgarian masons and architects, and it was in the style of the finest example of the Christian Orthodox architecture in the Balkans. Similar churches could be seen today in Holy Mount Athos and Meteora, both in northern Greece. Uh, the church itself is splendid as architecture, but for every single Christian Orthodox church, it is the murals that are most important. Unlike the Western Christianity in the Eastern Orthodox tradition, Murals and icons are the most impor important form of art. It's not stained glass, it's not sculptures, it's the images that you can see. So the murals in Riva Monastery are extremely beautiful and important. Most of them could be seen on the walls of the main church, both outside and inside. When we talk about exterior, we can really lose a lot of time exploring them. For example, here we have the so-called wandering of the soul. Or these are 20 different meetings of the human soul for 40 days after the death. Here, in the very center of every single image, you can see a small figure, which more or less looks like a child in a white robe. This is the human soul, always 
supported by the guardian angel. So these are meetings where all the deeds of the person when they were alive are remembered. Questions are asked. If the person was a good one or a bad one, and thus the decision will be taken. Heaven or hell. Of course, the images that you can see around are images also from the everyday life. Here, in this frame, if you look at the bottom, you can see an ox cart. And uh, on the cart, there are some pale and ill people there on a journey. And you can see the images of the devils around. They are giving signals. They are leading the way. Why? These people, in their desperation, are going to commit a sin. Why? Because they are going to meet a sorcerer or a witch here to try to find a cure. But that's an illusion according to the official church. That's a sin. And you commit a sin. But of course, there's always a chance to repent. How? By the Holy Confession that is presented on the top. Here, on the top left, we have the person confessing all of their sins to the priest. And also with the presence of angel and the divine light. So the presence of God is all around. But this is only when you commit all of your sins. You confess all of them. You don't hide anything. And when you hide or when you lie, this is what happens. You can see the devil whispering in the ears of the poor soul. And especially look at the angel. The angel is just like that. Oh my God, another lost soul. What can we do? Well, we can just wait to see for the final outcome. Of course, the soldier of God, Archangel Michael, is presented here, torturing the soul of the dead. He is presented extracting the soul of the dead person in order to be delivered for justice. And justice which will decide where the soul will go. One option, if it was a righteous soul, is to go to the Garden of Eden. To heaven. Here on the upper part of the image we have the Garden of Eden protected by high walls. Inside we can see uh, three prophets from the Old Testament and outside there's a group of people being led by a man in blue robe with keys. You guessed right. That's Peter with the keys opening for all those righteous people. Of course, there's always another option, which is depicted below. This is hell. You can see the images of devils torturing naked people. Here, the artist was very explicit and at the same time put a lot of details on the murals. If you were uh, tailor and you were uh, stealing material from your clients, you go to hell. If you're a pub owner and you sell wine with water, you go to hell. We love on real unspoiled wine. Yeah, they were very detailed in the catalog of scenes there. But of course, there's always chance for salvation. And it is presented here on this mural. This is the scene of the Last Judgment. On the very top, you can see a man with a crown sitting on a throne. And that's Jesus, who is in his role of Supreme Judge. He's flanked by his mother, Virgin Mary, and Saint John the Baptist, asking him to be merciful on the souls that he is going to put on trial. Below, so we have the image of the Holy Dove, which is a representation of the Holy Ghost. And also we have uh, uh, here the hand of God 
holding the scales where the soul will be judged. The devils are trying to interfere. They are trying to have another soul joining them. But the angels are always here trying to stop this interference. At the same time, there are always two options. The first option is the river of fire or lava where all the sinners would go directly to hell. And the second option is for the righteous people, which is here, to the left. Again, led by Peter to the Garden of Eden, behind the high walls over there. But the church is also splendid with its interior, as every single church, as I mentioned, uh, murals and icons are very important. That's why they covered every single space in the church. The most important ones are always on the top, and then below are typically images of different saints. Here you can see three altars, the main altar in the middle, flanked by two smaller altars. In one of them, the last Bulgarian king, Boris III, was buried after his death in 1943, but his body remains were exhumed by the communists in the late 1940s. What you can see here is also the altar places here, the so-called iconostasis. This is typically a wooden wall covered with icons separating the altar from the nave. Why? Because you don't need eyes to believe. You only need heart for that. You don't need to see what is going on there. You just have to believe. Of course, the monastery complex consists of other buildings as well. Some of the most beautiful residential areas of the monastery are the guest rooms. Those are special rooms named after different villages and towns in Bulgaria. People from uh, these places donated money to the monastery and this is the reason why they had special places. Mostly those were places for meetings. And when you have your guests, of course, you have to be in a cozy atmosphere. That's why these uh, rooms were beautifully decorated with murals and stucco and beautiful wood carved ceilings, like the one that we see here, Kuprishtica guest room or Chirpan guest room with the colorful carpets all around, or Tetevan guest room, again those colorful carpets and murals and also the Ottoman type of uh, sitting, these couches, Minderi, framing the walls of the place. The monastery is really beautiful from the top. If you visit the Hrelu Tower, which is typically open for uh, visitors, you can have a magnificent vistas around the monastery. Not only the monastery itself, but also the nearby mountain hills. Also another place for beautiful sights of the monastery are the balconies of the monastery. If you're a regular visitor, you cannot visit them. So our suggestion is to go to the museum, pay a small amount of money for your ticket to the guest rooms, and someone from the museum will take you up there. Just be careful. Pictures are not allowed from uh, the balconies of the monastery, but I'm sure you won't regret those magnificent views that you can see. Real monastery is definitely a sacred site, a sacred, a sacred place, which is still inhabited by monks. It's an active monastery. It's not a museum. They would have their services every day, early in the morning and late in the afternoon. Here you can see one of the monks holding this wooden beam. Actually, this is called for prayer. In the dark times when no bell towers were inside, the, this wooden beam 
was used instead of a bell. The sound was calling you for a prayer inside the church. The monastery is a sacred place for every Bulgarian. It's considered as a Jerusalem for the Bulgarians, a place for pilgrimage. And the monastery is still the most sacred part of the Bulgarians today. And it's a place of worship, it's a place for pilgrims or just visit for both locals and foreigners. But the place itself keeps a very special place in every single Bulgarian's heart. Because here, this is the heart of Bulgaria. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.